And actually, I wanted to get, that, that reminds me, I wanted to um, give you guys a poll to see exactly um, how many of our audience, audience members have a Twitter account, who has ever tweeted, who hasn't, or who needs to know what is a tweet. So let me put that up here for you. Okay, so that should be up right now, and I'm seeing your answers coming in. We'll give you a couple more seconds here to answer if you haven't already. Okay, it looks like everyone's answered. Oh, almost. All right, it looks like everybody's answered. 28% of you said that yes, you have tweeted before. 20 or 72% actually said you've never tweeted before. But the good news is that everybody knows what a tweet is. So we're already making a lot of progress here. Thank you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and take that down. Okay. So now that we have that cleared up, let's go ahead and go back to actually how you create a, a Twitter account. So like I said, you go have to go to Twitter first, which is www.twitter.com. And once you have this home page up here, really all you have to do is just begin making your account. So as you can see here, it prompts you at the beginning if you already have an account to enter your username or email and to enter a password and then to sign in. So if you have already done this before, that's where you would go to log into Twitter. Next step, if you have never tweeted and do not have a Twitter account, which most of you don't, um, you want to go through these steps and Twitter is very helpful. So it's asking for your full name. And since I have a, both a personal Twitter account and I manage the NARO Twitter account, I am going to go ahead and create one for one of my colleagues, uh, Tamar Greenspan, who, who has given me her approval to do so. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set that up. So let's see. So I enter Tamar's first name. You might notice I put an A in at the end. That's just because I'd already created a practice account for Tamar. And um, so we need to create a different one. A little bit of background. So, okay. So we enter her email. And then you go ahead and create a username, or excuse me, a password that you think will work best for you that you'll remember. And you go ahead and press sign up for Twitter. And so once you do that, everything's populated. You will get all green checks down the side like you see if everything checks out, if no one else has that email address or name or password. And it, you can see I used a lot of characters for the password. So obviously, that means the password is strong. So we're going to go ahead. And we are going to change Tamar's username. And that we are going to make it tgpolicy1. And again, it's validated. It says that username is clear and no one else has been using that. So we're going to go ahead and create the account. All right, great. So your account has already been tweeted, or excuse me, created, uh, which is the first step, as you can see. So we are done caring about the World Cup right now, so we're going to say no thanks. Okay, welcome to Twitter. So from here, Twitter is really, really helpful. Um, it's going to take you through all the steps, really holding your hand to make sure you do this right. So as you can see, the Twitter teacher here pops up and says, this is a tweet. Tweets are short messages that have up to 140 characters and contain these links. So we're going to go to next. And now it's going to help you. It's talking about building your timeline, which means building followers, people that follow your account on Twitter, um, and creating a, um, a place, a timeline, so to speak, very similar to the Facebook timeline, where everyone's tweets that you follow are captured in one space. And we'll go into what a timeline is as far as a definition a little bit later. but. 
So let's start doing this. So build your, so start by following five it asks you to do. So we're going to follow these five people that it has here. Okay, so then we're going to hit next. Okay, and it's prompting you to pick five more. So we are just going to go with the, the first things that we see here. Shakira, this, we can follow Katy Perry. And of course you can choose who you want to follow, but this will, this will just give us a starting place here. And these are all musicians, of course you do not have to follow them. A great group to follow is National Naro, a little plug for us, um, and we'll show you our account a little bit later. We also have Preston, our president, his Twitter account, and Saul Ramirez, our CEO, also great um, Twitter handles to follow. So once we click Next, it's asking if we want to search for other people at this time. Well, we're not going to do this. You can choose to do this if you want. If you want to see if any of your friends are on Twitter, you can use whatever email application that you have um, and, and search contacts via that way. So you could search for Outlook for those of us that have it, or you could search another kind. But in the process, if you don't want to do this, or if you don't feel comfortable doing this, there's a skip option here at the bottom that you can click, and we're doing that. Okay, so now we have a little bit of a timeline set up. So what we want to do is start creating our profile. So we can put a face to the person who's actually doing the tweeting. So um, we have upload image. So since this is Tamar, we are going to go to Tamar Greenspan headshot and upload that. Okay, it says done. And there she is. It, the, now, something that's really important about the picture that you choose Depending on how you're choosing to use this account, like if this is for your housing authority to have a presence on Twitter, I recommend using your housing authority logo that you already have set up. There's something that we're going to be talking about called a cover photo, which is a banner that um, goes across the top of the screen. Um, this isn't normally there. You're, they're asking for you to confirm your email address. But if you go to see me, You'll notice this big blue space. That's a cover photo. I recommend you using um, a, a personal touch here. Perhaps um, pictures, a great group shot of your residents doing something, or maybe a picture of your whole staff here. It puts kind of a personal feel to uh, the organization that's making use of Twitter, and it helps um, your audience really connect with you. So since this would be a personal account for Tamar, this is a picture of her, and of course, remember to stay professional. But at this point, your account is set up. So from here, you just have to go and finish creating your bios and your preferences that you would like. So let's go to your bio. Okay, you can edit profile, and that's where I would go. I was talking about, um, well, we'll stick with bio for right now. So. Tamar is a senior policy analyst at NARO National. That's our Twitter handle. And Washingtonian. And again, depending on how you're using this, you'll fit your bio to that description. If Tamar was using this as a professional account, then she would um, that's why we have her mentioning senior policy analyst here. If you're just using this as an executive director for your, um, for your own personal account, but you want to link to your housing authority, I recommend including um, retweets are not endorsements. That's something to make clear so people understand that um, that's not the Housing Authority's official position on something, perhaps. It, always important to include in your bio. Then we could say Washington, D.C. She's located in D.C. There we go. 
And then if you wanted to link to a website, if Tamar had a personal website, she could certainly link to that. If this was, again, your Housing Authority account, I would recommend um, linking that to your Housing Authority's main web page. So from here, you have the choice to go ahead and pick a theme, color, etc. Design is really up to you. I will leave that to you all. But this is prompt prompting you to update your cover photo, which again, um, I said that was where you can put that personal touch. It's where you want to put a picture of your staff or your residents working in the garden or something like that to show community engagement. Uh, these are the profile picture and the cover letter are really good opportunities to kind of tell a story just through those two images and it gives an immediate impression. Now, for those of you that might have Twitter accounts or have sent a tweet before that have not used a profile picture, I recommend changing that. Definitely make sure you have some kind of image there. Otherwise, if you do not have a profile picture, an egg is going to come up. And um, a lot of people regard accounts without profile pictures as spam simply because they don't know who's behind the account. So it's really important to familiarize your audience um, as, as you're building this. You need to keep that in mind. So we're going to go ahead and save these changes for right now. And you can see that they've already helped you set up your first couple tweets. Um, we're not going to tweet those out right now because we will be deleting this account. But if, if you wanted to say you were on Twitter, you can see that they've already prompted this for you and all you would have to do is click tweet. So it's really very simple. So I just want to touch on one more thing um, before we go ahead and start this. Uh, start the second part of the webinar, and that is your privacy settings. And that might be something that's very important to you all. So to go to privacy settings, you go to the setting option, which is this little spoke up in the corner, and you scroll down to settings. Here you can see if you need help, keyboard shortcuts to get to certain um, actions like copy, paste, delete, etc. settings, and sign out. You go to settings. And you can see there's many different options here on the left um, that will allow you to design your profile and, uh, and set it how you want it to be. So we're going to go to security and privacy. And it says, it gives you a couple options here that you can choose to set how you would like. Um, now, the most important thing that I want to point out here, it gives you the option to protect your tweets. That means that if someone wants to follow you on Twitter, meaning they want to see your original content that you produce, then what happens is you're basically going to have to be sent a friend request, very similar to Facebook again. And you have to approve that follow, meaning you have to say, yes, it's OK for this person to follow me. Since um, you know this is an option, and this might be an okay option for a personal account, but when you're looking at Housing Authority accounts specifically, you want to get your story out to as many people as possible. So I really recommend saying that you leave protect my tweets unchecked because, again, if you do, you have to approve every single person that follows you and then your tweets won't show up and that is not what we want. We want to spread our story as much as possible, which is crucial. So with that said, that was kind of a quick tutorial on how you set up the account and how you really get started. And remember, this is all being recorded, so we're going to have the recording available for you to look over and to review as often as possible from the NARA website, and we'll be sending that out to you. So don't worry if um, you're all just taking it in right now. Um, okay, so next we are going to have um, Gabby give a quick quiz, and then she's going to go ahead and tell you about some important Twitter lingo that you have to know. All right, so let's get that pull up there for you. And actually, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if anybody's going to catch this because it was the first, well, it's a, it's a tough question. We'll see if you picked up on it. Okay, it's up now. We'll give you a about a minute to answer this question. Oh, 
Okay, I think all of you, oh, we'll give you a couple more seconds here. Okay, so it looks like everybody's answered, and actually 97% of you guys got it right. So congratulations, the answer is um, 140 characters. So again, the number of characters that are allowed max in every tweet is 140 characters. So as you can see, it's kind of a challenge to fit in a really concise, um, clear message in just 140 characters. Now remember that includes spaces. Um, so later in the webinar, we're going to show you a couple tricks on how you can make the most of your 140 characters, including shortening links and I'm uh, and scheduling tweets and embedding videos. So these are all just a couple tips, and Gabby's going to be talking about that. So without further ado, I will switch the presenter commands over to Gabby. Hi, everyone. I just want to say thank you again for taking the time out of your day to join us in this Twitter 101 webinar. Uh, first things first, what we're going to do is we're just going to run through a list of certain Twitter lingo that is pretty vital to understanding how this social media platform works. And as you can see on my screen, I have the NARO Twitter handle up. Um, and we'll start off with uh, just some basic vocabulary. And because I already mentioned the word handle, this right here, as you see me kind of make a circle around National NARO, uh, the at NARO National is the Twitter handle. Uh, so basically what this means is that, I apologize, you didn't see any of that. Um, but what I wanted to go through first is the NARO national handle and what the word handle means. Um, I'm pointing to our at NARO national, which will then pop up with an underline because if you were to click on it, you would then be able to go to that Twitter handle. So again, that's exactly what a handle is. You guys were creating your Twitter handles before, as Emily was showing you in the first portion of this webinar. Uh, so now that we have handle out of the way, let's go down the list of certain Twitter lingo that you're going to need to be aware of. The first one is going to be a direct message. It'll stand, uh, the uh, acronym for this word is DM. And basically, this gives you the opportunity to send a private message to any Twitter handle that you feel the need to communicate with directly. Uh, so as you can see, my Twitter handle is up on the feed as we were discussing earlier, the Twitter timeline. Um, this is me. Please disregard the, uh, Twitter, the tweet about Hobby Lobby when I pick this up. But basically, you can click on this settings and scroll down to send a direct message. This will then open a box that allows you to send a private message that only you and the other Twitter user can see uh, moving forward. So you can send anything. You are also limited to 140 characters here. And then you can type anything you want and send the message. All right, moving on, I wanted to show you guys what a mention is. So if you were to start composing a tweet, which is in this box here, you could say, at, we're going to tweet at Emily Posse By including her Twitter handle in this message, you are mentioning her on Twitter. So at EJ Posse, thank you for your participation. And then you would be able to tweet this out if you so wanted to. But that is what a mention is. Mentioning someone else's Twitter handle, which is, again, this name right here, in a tweet. Secondly, a retweet. So, for instance, if you liked a tweet that you saw on your timeline and you wanted to retweet it from your personal timeline or your housing authority's timeline, you can click this right here which says retweet and we are going to just retweet the one that I have already drafted. So if you click retweet 
It'll then confirm that you want to retweet this from the account, and you just click the button, plain and simple. And then if you go back up to your Twitter handle, you will then be able to see that retweet. Um, the next word that we want to go over, the next uh, vocab word for Twitter is to quote someone on Twitter. So again, if you wanted to quote someone on Twitter in this notifications button, say we'll go back to this tweet again. Um, we actually can't quote this because we already retweeted, but we can quote this tweet right here where it says, you know, we always enjoy having you. So say we wanted to quote this and say thanks, we can go to the ret we can go to this button, sorry, the retweet button. You can copy and paste this into a new tweet. And you just have to put the acronym QT before it. And then that will allow you to quote this tweet and say thank you. And then you would be able to tweet this out as well. And this again will pop up on your timeline and a notification will go to any handle that was associated with that timeline as well. The next vocab word that we want to go through is what it means to favorite. I'm sure everyone has heard, oh, I favorited that on Twitter or, oh, they favorited my tweet. What a favorite means is this button right here where the star is. So you could favorite a tweet. It's not going to pop up in your Twitter timeline, but it will allow you to keep track of tweets that you had favored. And it will also give a notification to the person who posted that tweet that your organization or your Twitter handle did in fact favorite their tweet as well. The next major vocab word that I want to teach you guys is the hashtag. Now let me just explain a little bit about what the hashtag is. These on this side bar right over here is trends. And basically what a hashtag is, is it allows you to keep track of topics that are trending on Twitter. So for instance, if you wanted to compose a tweet um, congratulating, let's say, you know, the men's soccer team for a great job in the World Cup, you would use the hashtag World Cup 2014. As you see, it's already coming up here. Then what you can do after you send out your tweet is you can go to the search Twitter button and search the hashtag World Cup 2014. And then from there, you will be able to see everyone who has been tweeting out about the World Cup. So any tweet that has been tweeted that includes the hashtag World Cup 2014, you will then be able to see what their tweets are. Um, one hashtag that NARO uses um, regularly is the hashtag housing matters without a space and every time that someone used the hashtag housing matters it will then come up on this feed so you're not only able to keep track of uh, certain hashtags that you're using and how effective they are but how many other people also think they are effective because they are including them in their tweets um, one thing I do want to stress about the hashtag is that if you do put a space in between these words, like I did up here, it's not going to show up as a hashtag. It will simply just hashtag the first word that is closest to the hash number. And lastly, I wanted to show you guys um, what it means to mention someone on Twitter. And basically mentioning someone is sort of the same thing as quoting someone. Uh, so you would just say mention and a tweet or copy and paste a tweet here and this is just allowing you to um, not only again mention someone who's been tweeting something that you like but it's really just the practice of tweeting something that you've already seen. Uh, so that's pretty much the basic vocab words that you need to be aware of heading into your Twitter adventures. 
Um, but one thing I do want to clarify before I show you guys how to shorten links and add photos to your tweets is the difference between a tweet and Twitter. Twitter encompasses everything that this social media platform has to offer. The following, uh, reading things on Twitter, etc. This is pretty much, you know, the concept of Twitter. You know, you said, oh, I saw that on Twitter, or oh, I haven't checked my Twitter lately. That is how you reference Twitter. Um, to reference tweets or to use tweets um, in a, I don't know, a sentence or just in conversation is, oh, I tweeted that out or I saw that tweet. It's, you know, pretty, it's pretty simple. It's easy to get them confused. I do it all the time. Um, but it's just one thing that we wanted to make sure that you guys knew heading forward is that there is a difference between tweet and Twitter. Um, next, what I want to go through is showing you guys how to shorten links. If you can see this tweet right here, this has this thing called a bit. And a bit is pretty much a shortened link. So if I wanted to include a shortened link, you do this so that you don't use up all of your characters that you have left after you draft a tweet. I would go to a website called Bitly. This website is B-I-T-L-Y dot com and it allows you to shorten tweets, uh, shorten links, excuse me, to include in your Twitter account. So, for instance, if I wanted to tweet out this direct news article from NARO's website, I would highlight the web address, I'd right click, I'd hit copy, I would then go to my Bitly page, I would put it in this box here where it says paste a link to shorten it, I'd right click, I would hit paste, and then I would click the button shorten. And then as soon as that happens, it will give me a shortened version of this link so that I can maximize my 140 character space that I have on Twitter. So I will hit the, this box copy and it is now copied to my clipboard, which allows me to copy it into Twitter. And see, I have a shortened account, uh, a shortened link here that I can then tweet out. Uh, so it just really only uses about, you know, 12 characters, which, uh, well, more than 12 characters. I'm sorry, I don't do math very well. Um, but it shortens everything to allow you to maximize the Twitter, uh, the tweet space that you have available. Um, so that's shortening Twitter links. And next, I want to show you guys how to incorporate photos into your Twitter. Um, we believe that, you know, if you can share a photo with any type of tweet, it gives people more incentive to click on it because they will see this photo and they'll want to, want, they'll want to know what the photo is pertaining to. So for instance, if I was going to tweet out a photo to go along with this webinar, I would say snapshot of webinar in progress, hashtag Naro does Twitter. And then I would click on this photo box right here. And then I would scroll down to wherever you have the photo saved. I have mine saved on the desktop, the photo for Twitter. You click it, highlight it, select open, and there you go, it'll pop up right here. So then if I wanted to tweet this out, I would then hit tweet. And as soon as it loads, it will then pop up into the Twitter page. And then you can click on it and open it, and there you see you have a, a nice photo of Emily working on the setup for our Twitter webinar and also a nice hashtag and the link to the photo as well. And that is pretty much all that I have for you guys when it comes to the vocab associated with Twitter. So I'm going to shift this back over to Emily. Thanks, Gabby. That was a really great review of Twitter vocab and how you can shorten links to make the most of your characters and um, adding a photo. And Definitely adding photos, as Gabby said, I just want to reiterate how important that is. 
um, analytics show specifically that um, once you add a photo to your tweet, the, the views and the reach, meaning how many people actually see the tweet, goes through the roof. Um, those numbers are really important too. And of course, the goal is to spread your message as much as you possibly can. Um, so that's what we're after. So we do encourage you to add images whenever possible. Okay, so right now you're seeing my screen and you might be thinking, what in the world is this? So this is TweetDeck. And first let me explain what it is. Basically, this helps you schedule your tweets so that you don't have to be sitting on Twitter all day when you want to send a tweet at an exact time. For example, if I wanted to tweet, again, we'll, we'll, we'll take a page from Gabby's book. If I wanted to tweet at Gabby, so I'll mention and then underscore Gabby, and then you can see her Twitter handle pops up there, so I'm going to click that. I want to say thanks for presenting during today's webinar. Hashtag Naro does Twitter. Hashtag housing matters. I can go ahead, now that I've drafted this tweet, this is exactly what I want to say. I have a couple options here. I can add an image. I can schedule a tweet. I can use the direct message function, which means you can send a message directly to someone on Twitter. Um, but we're not going to do that right now. I want to schedule this tweet. So look down here. You see the calendar. Say we want that to go out at 340. So we, well, you know what? We'll do something a little bit sooner. How about 3, 337, 336, so we can see it actually happen. And that's today, so you just have to select the date. You have to select AM or PM and the time. And you can see it says tweet at 3.36 PM. So it pops over here in your scheduled column. And then at 3.36, it will automatically tweet that out. So the great thing about this is that you can go ahead in the morning if you know you want something to tweet. Um, and you can go ahead and schedule it. As executive directors and frontline staff, we, of course, understand that you are all so busy all day long, have so many different projects going on, and time is just not there for you to, to go in and, and be active, an active voice on Twitter like you wish you could. So this is a really, really great option for us. I know we do this in the morning and schedule our tweets throughout the day. So if you ever see National NARA tweeting, most times it's because it's been scheduled in the morning. Um, and as you can see, we'll scroll back over right here on the home page, my tweet just popped up. So this should disappear in a minute, but you can see it's already been transferred over and it went out automatically by itself because again, I set it for that time. So this is a really helpful tool. Best part about it is it's free. You can access it at tweetdeck.com and it will automatically come up and you will just have to make sure you sign in with your Twitter um, username and password that you already have set up and then this automatically populates. Um, just really quickly, so the home, again, will act like your Twitter feed. That, that screen, we'll switch back over here, this screen where all your tweets of all the people you follow are put into one place. So we'll go back to our tweet deck. That's all right here. Then your mentions, again, that's if um, someone met, added your Twitter handle to their tweet. They'll all show up right here. And then these are your direct message if you're talking to anyone in particular. And then on the left side is your scheduled tweets. And so um, it's broken down in a really concise way, very clear to understand. And as you can see, now the tweet that um, was tweeted out a couple minutes ago to Gabby has now disappeared. So my scheduled column is empty. So again, this is a really, really awesome way to schedule those tweets ahead of time. So if there is a hearing um, in the house that you want to cover, you want your community members to know about, or maybe your mayor, you could go ahead and schedule a tweet. All you have to do, again, is write that tweet, draft it right here. We recommend including um, tweeting at your mayor, so mentioning their handle in your tweet, um, or any 
stakeholder in the community, and then saying this hearing is happening today in Washington. Um, let's raise our voice and for the needs of affordable housing, something to that effect, and then you would go ahead and schedule that tweet, and then it would appear on the side. So I encourage you to use this tool. This is something that we use all the time, and um, it's definitely a very helpful resource moving forward in your Twitter adventures. So um, this it concludes our presentation part of the webinar. We want to go ahead and open it up for question and answer. And as I said at the beginning, you were free to go in and type your questions um, that you are dying to have answered. So Gabby and I are going to be available to answer those. Um, and feel free to start sending those in. Um, in the meantime, we will, let's see. Well, we don't have any questions yet, so I encourage you to send in those questions. Oh, looks like we're starting to get a few. Okay, so one question. From your home page, how do you get to TweetDeck? Okay, great question. So what you do is go to TweetDeck.com, and this page pops up. Okay, so then you do sign in on the web. Okay, and my account's automatically signed into. This is the National NARA one. So let's open up, let's open up a new page here really quickly. Okay, let's make that full screen. Let's go tweetdeck.com. Let's do sign in on web. Okay, perfect. This is what I wanted to get to. So you can see, as I mentioned before, you want to go ahead and enter your username. So our username for Tamar in this case was at TG underscore policy one. So we enter that. We enter our Twitter password that we saved and we sign in. And it's going to take a second to populate. It's pulling together all the accounts that she follows, which wasn't many. Um, yes, no. We'll say no for the time being so we can see this. And so Tamara doesn't have a lot of action on here right now because she hasn't, she doesn't follow many people and she doesn't have a lot of, um, she does, hasn't tweeted at all herself. So this is what would show up, and that's how you get that. Uh, Go ahead, Gabby. Oh, I, the next question that I saw that popped up was, do you write your own tweets or search for retweets? Which do you find most effective? Uh, I believe both are effective to their own means. Um, I think that's something that I think all Twitter uh, people and social media people would say, is that it really depends on, you know, the content of the of the tweet that you want to send out. So for instance, if your housing authority just, you know, completed a garden or gave out scholarships to housing authority students who were heading to college, that's something that you would want to draft your own tweet for. Anything that you find is particular to your housing authority or your community development area, you would like to draft your own tweet for that issue. And then include, you know, a crafty hashtag or use, you know, hashtag housing matters, something that is relative to that tweet and the subject content of that tweet and tweet that out. Um, with retweets, basically, um, the importance of retweeting is that if something is retweeted multiple times, it will overpopulate in people's uh, Twitter timeline. So more and more people will be able to see this tweet again and again, driving attention to the subject content at hand. Um, so they're both extremely effective. I can't say which one is more effective because they're both effective to their own means. Um, but definitely, if you want to send your own tweet that's pertaining specifically to your housing authority, your community development um, program, you would want to do that on your own. You wouldn't want to retweet something. Um, but if you do see something that is extremely important on your timeline, go ahead and retweet it because I'm sure other people thought it was important too, and it's a great way to keep the conversation going. 
Okay, our next question, um, do, oh, we just had that one. Um, does a picture link count against your 140 characters? That's a great question. It actually does. Um, anytime a link is included, that's automatically going to deduct from your total characters. So again, that's why it's important to really make sure you have a very clear and concise message. Um, and sometimes, you, if you have a, a message drafted and you add a link, you're going to go negative on the amount of characters that you have. And when that happens, um, the number of characters that you have left in the bottom will turn, it will show like minus a, a certain number count and it will be red. Um, that means you have no more, you have no more characters left. So in this instance, there's certain acceptable words that um, are accepted as abbreviation. For example, thank you can easily be, thank you can be thank you. It can be ty. Um, so that's one. And actually, as I mentioned earlier, we created a Twitter 101 breaking down the basics glossary for you all. So we're going to send that out right after, and then that will show you the abbreviations and some of the other vocabulary that we didn't talk about today in the webinar that are acceptable as Twitter abbreviations. And that, again, will help you um, make that 140 character limit a little bit more easy to work with. Uh, the next question that I saw that popped up was, what is on your tweet deck that is different from your Twitter, or are they showing exactly the same items, just in a different format? Uh, they are pretty much showing the same exact items in just a different format. It's allowing them to be, you know, right next to each other, as opposed to you having to flip through different uh, tabs on your Twitter. Um, the one thing that is different here is the possibility of allowing you to schedule tweets and to see, you know, that schedule in this, um, in the tweet deck that Emily currently has up. That, that's really the only difference. It just makes it easier for you and it's more, um, it, I'd say it's more, it's not as time consuming as tweeting throughout the day. It allows you to set up your tweets at the beginning of the day so that you do not have to worry about constantly tweeting throughout the day. We encourage you to, you know, check Twitter throughout the day, but if, you know, you're busy and you can't, you're able to schedule those tweets and you can pretty much forget about it for the rest of the day, which is really convenient. I would add in, though, Gabby, um, you want to make sure, uh, you want to make sure what you have scheduled on uh, tweet deck will be appropriate throughout the day. Someone else asked about classic faux pas um, issues on Twitter. And, you know, there have been a couple case studies for Fortune 500 companies where norm they made a joke on Twitter in regards to their product. And what would have normally been an acceptable joke uh, turned into not such an acceptable joke after, you know, something, a, a major, like, catastrophic event happened that no one was anticipating. And then if that tweet still goes out, that that can be poorly perceived, obviously, and that ends up hurting your brand. So a lot of times, um, it's NARO's policy as a part of our social media plan to make sure that, you know, if you are joking, it has to be really appropriate. And most times I recommend just to stay away from joking altogether because you don't know how it could be perceived. You just really want to stay with telling your story, and how would you want to tell your story professionally? Um, so keep that in mind with TweetDeck and any of the scheduling um, services for Twitter. That's just something you want to make sure your tweets are going to be timely. So keep that in the back of your mind. I, one more faux pas I want to add to that question is to always make sure that if you're direct messaging someone and it contains, you know, somewhat personal or private information, that it is a direct message and not an actual tweet. It's easy for anyone to get that confused. Um, so just always make sure that you go to that person's Twitter handle, click the settings bar, and click the option to send a direct tweet as opposed to just composing a regular tweet that everyone can see. Okay. Um, there is another question. We're getting quite a bit of questions, but we still have time, so keep sending them in, guys. Thank you. We appreciate them, really. Um, someone asked, Someone asked, how would a social media management system such as Hootsuite work with this? 
And I'm assuming with this, it you're referring to TweetDeck, and if not, go ahead and clarify that for me. Um, but Hootsuite, as mentioned, is another sort of social media planning site, um, again, focused on Twitter. It does not interact or collaborate with Tweet, TweetDeck. They're two different systems. So TweetDeck is uh, my personal preference, and that's why we've been using it here at, at NARO as um, a staple in our social media policy. But Hootsuite is another great option, and you can definitely use that as well. It has the same scheduling functionalities to it. Um, another question I saw was, can you remove a posted tweet after it's been posted? Uh, you can definitely do that. There is uh, an option in any tweet. There's usually three dots next to each other. Or if, Emily, if you want to pop one of those tweets up. I am doing that now. And delete maybe mine. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we will. Yes, but yes, go ahead. You, can, you can definitely delete a tweet. It's just, it's the same thing like Facebook. Say you posted a status that you no longer care to have public or, you know, you changed your mind. You can click the garbage can button and you can then delete a certain tweet that you had tweeted out. Uh, so Emily is going to show you um, this one. You go to, oh, right here. There you, there you go. go. The garbage can button. You go ahead and click. And that will allow you to delete the tweet. And it asks you, do you really want to delete this? And we can keep this one up. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel it. But if I really wanted to delete it, it would be no problem. And then it would be gone. Um, I did see that someone tried to upload a photo that was too big and they asked how they could make it smaller. Um, one thing that you can do is to either shrink the photo down and save it as a new photo, um, which would just be, you know, reducing how large the image is. The one, um, for instance, if you're uploading something from an iPhone, because the iPhone um, or, you know, any cellular phone, really a smartphone, the, the photos are saved to a smaller file size and then you have the option to make it bigger if you send it via email. But for Twitter, it's very easy to upload a photo because it allows you, it, it's already pretty much to the size that Twitter accepts. Um, if you want to do something from the computer, um, like I said before, I would just reduce the size of the photo and resave it as a smaller file. Um, and then if it's a link to a photo, you can definitely use Bitly. Um, that is a really good tool for that in that instance. But um, if you are going to be uploading stuff from a cell phone, a smartphone, it's much easier um, to make sure, well, to ensure that the photo is of that size to upload to Twitter. But if it's from the computer, just reduce the image size and it'll be fine. So we have another question that says, can you delete a retweet? Um, and the answer is, if it's your tweet that you created in-house yourself, like a national NARO tweet, then yes, we could delete it, and the retweets associated with it would automatically go away. But if it's someone else's, if, if you retweeted someone else's, then no, you cannot delete your retweet. And we still have a couple more minutes. Does anyone else have any other questions? Well, we're, while we're waiting for a couple final questions, we do challenge you to now go online, now that you've seen this tutorial, and go ahead and create your own Twitter account. That we, we encourage you to do that right now while it's fresh in your mind. You saw how easy it is. Now go ahead and do it yourself. Again, we recommend following the National NARO account. We recommend following your region's account, other housing authorities in the area, other colleagues. 
um, something that we're putting together in-house that we're going to have ready for the summer conference um, in Tampa, Florida in mid-July is a, um, a master list of all of the U.S. senators and U.S. Uh, representatives so that you can tweet at them in your advocacy efforts. Um, Twitter is a really fantastic tool for advocacy. We use it regularly and we uh, have a lot of great direct conversation with staffers and the representatives and senators themselves um, via Twitter. Because remember, 100% of U.S. senators have a Twitter and more than 95% of U.S. representatives have a Twitter. So this is an excellent way of cutting through all of the other messaging, all of the phone, phone calls, voicemails, emails. This is really an awesome outreach tool and we encourage you to take advantage of it. So when you go and set up your Twitter account right after this, as we hope you do, please make sure you include the hashtag, hashtag Naro does Twitter. And let me just show you what that would look like right now. So hashtag Naro does Twitter. And that's what you would use. Remember, keep those spaces out of there. We need, you want the entire hashtag to be recognized. So no spaces. And make sure you include that in your first tweet. See if we have any final questions. Uh, is there any way to tweet via text message is one of the last questions that we got. Um, there, Emily, I don't believe there is. No, and actually it's funny, I was watching a um, history of Twitter the other day, which was really enjoyable, began all the way back in 2006, if you can believe it or not. Um, but it was really interesting because the original creators of Twitter actually were playing with that idea. They were like, hey, is there a way that we can create, um, a, turn a text into some kind of really quick message? So in an essence, a tweet is very similar to a text, but... I see what your question is, and that's kind of a little bit off course, but so no, um, there, there's no way to text someone and have it magically turn into a tweet. That's not possible. Um, but again, a tweet is super easy to compile in just one second, and, and it's really straightforward. And then I see we have one more question. It says, what are lists in Twitter? Um, lists are actually a really great function um, so what happens with a list is that can help to categorize your followers. So say I want to follow some of our Housing America partners. Um, that's super easy. Then I can create a list for my Housing America partners. And let's see, that would include Enterprise. That could include the National League of Cities, Habitat for Humanity, uh, LISC. Um, the U.S. State Conference of Mayors, so you get the picture. It just helps put them all together in one unique place. Oh, I just um, got a notification from uh, one of our colleagues, Sylvia, and she said that you can actually text your tweet to a phone number if you have your phone number attached to your Twitter handle. So. This also works for non-smartphone users, which I am just becoming aware of, so I apologize for any of the other information that we gave you, but you can text your tweet to 40404 only if you set your phone number, your cell phone number, up to your Twitter handle. Huh, I didn't know that either. Good find, Sylvia. See, we're learning right along with you guys. <laughs> Um, we can also include the uh, the web address for the support link for Twitter into our follow-up email after this webinar to allow you guys to do that. Well, okay, I'm not seeing any other questions come in right now. So with that, I want to thank you all very much for taking time out of your very busy holiday weeks. I know there's probably a lot going on in your offices, a lot of planning. Um, and thank you so much for taking time and, and setting aside an hour just, just to learn social media. Again, this is a free tool. It's 
a really efficient tool. It's something that can help you message people in, in a different way that you might not otherwise have thought of. And we encourage you to take advantage of it. Um, NARO, I'll take this advantage, actually has a new initiative we just launched uh, two or three weeks ago. It's called What Wednesdays, and since this is Wednesday, it's appropriate. Um, what's, it's hashtag W-H-A-A-T. Now, what stands for What Housing Authorities Accomplish Today. So, I encourage you to please get on Twitter every Wednesday. This is every Wednesday moving forward, no deadline. Send out a tweet to your congressman. Mention them in that tweet with, your, with their Twitter handles. Include a picture. Say, you know, our housing authority is doing this for the community, whatever this is. It could be, um, it could be some sort of resident service program. It could be community garden. It could be um, opening up a new co computer lab, a new healthcare service, anything you want. I encourage you to include a picture so they can really see how the resident's benefiting. And include that hashtag, what, in it. W-H-A-A-T. It's already started to become pretty popular, which I'm really excited about. We're really excited about it. But we want to continue to make, make this something on the top of your congressman's mind. So they go looking on Wednesday, well, what is our housing authority doing for us in our constituents community? So please take advantage of this. Um, we'd love more participation. And now that you guys are all Twitter pros, you'll be able to take part in this. And again, um, we will after this webinar, um, put up the recording of the webinar online, as well as um, send you all the link to that recording and the Twitter 101 glossary, so you can refer to it regularly. And with there being no more questions, I just want to thank you, my thank, thank my colleague Gabby Richards and our intern for doing a wonderful job today and helping me um, host this webinar. And thank you to all of you again for taking time. We look forward to speaking with you again. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone.